In today's Small Business Spotlight, we look at the art of managing up. And no, that doesn't mean kissing up to the boss, and it doesn't necessarily involve a lot of political maneuvering at work. It means two employees better understanding each other, even if they have different perspectives and different degrees of power within their organization. Joining us now with some advice, some coaching tips, the woman we like to call the workplace guru, Mary <laughs> Abajay of CareerStone Group. Welcome, it's good to have you here. Hey Bruce, good to be here. Good of, of you to stop by. One of your uh, key recommendations to people is, and, and one of the questions that we as workers need to be able to ask ourselves is, are you spending your time and effort on the thing you were really hired to do. That's right, and that's the first kind of tip to being a good manager upper, is do the job you're hired to do. Oftentimes, and this is not to mean you shouldn't do more, but a lot of times we get into a job and we have a job to do, but we think something else is more interesting, so we spend our time there. So if you want to have a good relationship with your boss, make sure that you are doing the job you were hired to do. The primary energy, your primary, primary time energy. on the primary focus. Exactly, of, so that's tip number one. Um, making sure sure that uh, your, your boss may have multiple priorities, yes. but you want to align your time and your energy with the thing or things that matter most to your boss. Yeah, and sometimes this can be the things that we overtly know that are true, like his his overt goals, but also find out what's really important what matters to your boss that may be a little more covert. I don't mean that in like a secret sort of way, but for example, if your boss really cares about like team spirit, then make sure you're a team player. If your boss really cares about like uh, tying everything up nice and neat you know for his boss then do that like make sure you understand what's important to your boss not only in terms of projects but in terms of processes and how you actually work some of this is following and and, and picking up on what the boss says explicitly and some of it yeah. might be just being alert, alert. about that's right. Like for what my, the boss, my what, what, what matters most. Yeah, so like my people know that I will say what matters to most are deadlines, but what really matters to me is that you don't bother me a thousand times a day with questions. Like come to me with problem solved. So you learn that sort of thing about your boss. How important is it for an employee to really pick up on the key elements of a boss's individual style? Well, this is very key. This is really important. We want to avoid the trap of my boss should do this, my boss should do that, my boss should be this way, because you can't control your boss. If you you want to be successful managing up and we all have to do it every one of us has to be a follower you need to know your boss's style and it's your responsibility to adapt to that style part of being a good employee from your perspective is making the boss look good Absolutely. I mean it's that it's that notion of the rising tide lifting all boats and the boss has a bigger boat <laughs> than you <laughs> That's exactly right and that boss's boat may have room for you in that boat and it may not it's really always want to make your boss look good you never want to throw your boss under the bus you want to make your boss look good your department looks good because that makes everybody look good remember that you are there to serve your department your boss and yourself and the organization make your boss look good if your project gets singled out for special praise it may benefit your boss most but really it benefits everyone who on the team. Benefits everyone's on the team and the whole organization. You've already alluded to another piece of advice that you give and that is uh, bring solutions. Yeah. Uh, no boss, if it can be avoided, wants someone coming in, someone emailing with problems that then just sort of get done. Yeah, that's exactly right. You always want to bring a solution. If you have a problem, come with the problem and bring a solution or three different solutions. And the other thing around that is avoid surprises. Bosses don't like to be surprised. Like if there's something going on that we need to know about, you need to keep the boss in, in a prize of the stif different situations. And if there is a problem, bring a solution. Remember that the boss is human. Yes. That's part of the Mary Abijay creed. Uh, <laughs> yeah, human. Yeah. And then that means cut the boss some slack. Sometimes the bo your boss is going to be grumpy. Sometimes your boss is going to be tired. Sometimes your boss is going to be short-tempered. Sometimes your boss is going to ask you to do things that they may not support because they're being asked by their bosses. Mm -hmm. So remember, cut them some slack. They made mistakes as well. In, in sort of managing up, trying to, to uh, align yourself with your boss's goals and styles, do, do, do they know when when you're doing this? I mean, can it cut against you? If can it work against if, you? When if you're, you're a brown noser, is that what you're saying? Maybe. Yeah, absolutely. So your boss, like you, we, we can sniff authenticity, right? You can tell when someone's being authentic. And if you're going too far over the, you know, like whatever you want, what, if you're being obsequious, that can be really annoying. So you want to maintain an independent followership, but you still want to make your boss look good. But you cannot be a brown noser about it. So if you can't be sincere, and sincerity is probably the yeah. best recommendation but if you can at least fake sincerity really well yeah exactly. that's exactly right <laughs> keep them guessing Mary Abadeh the career stone group our workplace guru it's always great great being able to talk with you about Thanks, these important Bruce. workplace issues our, our small business spotlight for this time thank you again Mary